that I think every British garden should have a victory garden ongoing now. I think there should be a means tested tax for food storage for a, a nuclear winter, the one or two percent, because if there is a Mad Max scenario of like that, your biggest threat becomes your neighbor, especially if you're a hoarder of food, they'll come after you. So if, if there was a agreed location, everybody knew in your town, this is where we have 10 years worth of food for everybody, then there wouldn't be a societal lockdown. And I worked it out. If you go on Amazon right now to it's a sort of Norwegian rationing thing, you can spend 7,000 euros and you can have seven, seven years worth of, of food for one person. Now that's a lot of money, of course, but that's because it's a, it's a private company. And that's, but if there was economies of scale and a government thing, you could potentially cover everybody for a nuclear war for maybe 2,000 each per person. That would be a good tax. That would, that would take a lot of leverage away from dictators with nuclear weapons if we can all survive a nuclear war. You know, it takes away a lot of leverage. I think it sounds like it sounds like a, a a great movie. It sounds like a novel, but the the, um, the reality is that if some great catastrophe it doesn't have to be a nuclear war, if a comet hit the Earth tomorrow, you know, um, you know, a great catastrophe will happen. Billions of people will die. Some, fortunately, will survive in fairly in remote areas, and civilization hopefully will begin again. But to worry about it instead of just living your life and getting the most out of it that you can while you're here is a mistake. It's a bit like constantly spending. Well, I wouldn't say worry about it. I would just say have right. an, an insurance policy, you know, because they were fallout shelters I don't think you, were a big thing. I don't think you can insure against catastrophe. You can insure against a problem. You can insure against your house catching fire, but you can't insure against nuclear war other than um, make sure you've got strong defences and that you have sufficient uh, a, a sufficient deterrent mm. to make the other person think again, which is what the Cold War did. It's what nuclear weapons did. They made people on every side so frightened that they know that they're going to die and their families are going to die should they ever step over the line and use them. And um, that's uh, that's the situation. I, I refuse to live in fear. I refuse to worry about everything. I um, try to persuade other people not to not to spend their lives worrying about what might happen, and not to be led by their inf by their imaginations, but more to be led by their information. The problem is we don't get good information anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, the ultimate. It's not really insurance policy, but my faith keeps me strong, in, even in the faith of nuclear Armageddon, because I've made my peace with God already. So, and I think I actually probably should start evangelizing him more, just because if something does happen, I'll, I'll regret not of not of being sharing to people we you know. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm I'm very much of the same feeling and light without being without being attached to a religion. I've prayed. I pray in temples. I've prayed in. Catholic and Protestant churches. I prayed in mosques because I believe in a deity, but I certainly don't believe in a religion because I find them divisive and they're run by men. And men are looking always always have the frailties of men. They're looking for power. They're looking for advantage. I mean, um, you've only got to drive through the Midwest in the USA to discover how corrupt and wrong the um, religious structure is when it's just trying to take money off people. I'm sorry that your experience has been disappointing that way. It's uh, not too uncommon, that thought process. 